So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. iPhone 15 versus iPhone 15 Pro speed test. Let's begin with a boot up in three, two, go and see which one can get there first. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of times in our you know speed tests, I'm always talking about how you should just get the 15 Pro 120 Hertz. It's faster, yada, yada, yada. But let's see like what the animations look like, what the benchmarks are gonna look like. We're even gonna do a video rendering test and see if the 15 Pro really is much faster. You've seen right there that the 15 Pro definitely booted up faster, but is it gonna warrant the price differential between these two and like lending you to recommend you to the 15 Pro? Let's find out. Okay, so when it comes to Face ID, they both have Dynamic Island and they both unlock at the same time. But is there a very big difference in how the animation looks? And I can kind of see it. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but there's just a slight like choppier look to the iPhone 15. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. It's probably difficult to see on camera, but it's definitely noticeable. Now, when scrolling through here, this is also not quite as smooth as the iPhone 15 Pro. Again, we're in 60 Hertz. I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but it definitely feels like there's a little bit of like, it's not lag, it's like a little just choppier looking um, when by comparison to this right here, it just looks more seamless going through these pages and just general UI performance. Now in terms of the specification, we're looking at the Apple A16 Bionic carried over from the iPhone 14 Pro series. And then we do have ourselves the Apple A17 Pro chip. Now, big difference to note here, we do have six gigs of RAM versus eight gigs of RAM. So that might make a difference when we reload applications. So I ran the CPU benchmark first for Geekbench 6, and you can see the 15 Pro finished with a 2953 over the 15's 2559. You also see in the multi-core score a 7310 versus a 6467. So, and the iPhone 15 Pro actually finished faster than the iPhone 15. Now, this is scoring better than a 14 Pro Max and a 14 Pro, so still respectable, and even better than the iPad Pro 11 inch, fourth generation Apple M2 in that single core comparison right there, down there. You'll see this is also scoring better than the similar devices, but still beating out the iPhone 15. And then in the multi-core score, the iPad Pro 11 inch beats the iPhone 15 Pro and 15. Um, so that's pretty good as well. But overall, these are still very high scores on both phones for multi and single core scores. Let me know your thoughts on those below. So we're running an N22 benchmark here and I'll be back when they're in with their final score. So if you take a look at these two, the iPhone 15 Pro has the higher score of 1,458,040 versus the 1,328,908 on the left here. You can see a higher CPU score overall. And then we also do have a higher GPU score on both devices, along with higher memory scores. Well, we had a better score here on the left. That's kind of weird. Um, but then over here, we have a better score here on the UX on the right. So overall, the overall score was actually better on the 15 Pro by a pretty substantial margin, and this really pushes the phones. Let me go ahead and check how warm they feel. So the iPhone 15, pretty well managed, and the iPhone 15 Pro also pretty decent. They both feel pretty hot, though. There's like a really warm spot here on the table, but I wanted to go ahead and get these benchmarks out of the way before we do the app. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these off, let them restart, cool down a minute, and then we'll come back at about 8.30 a.m. and we'll start the speed test. Okay, so everything is closed out for both phones. You can see, let's go ahead and begin with weather. You could see faster on the right. Let's go into App Store. You could see it looked faster on the right. We'll go to games. And faster on the right, the actual scroll is something you'll notice is definitely more enjoyable on the right. I'm not sure if it picks it up here, but it definitely looks jarring by comparison to this 15 Pro. Let's go into the Groupon, but that's usually only when you're comparing it. Um, still, it's not acceptable to me when most phones at the lower price, lower price tiers are now getting the 120 Hertz. So I think Apple should just put like a 90 Hertz at least to make this look a little smoother. Um, that's just me. Some people might agree, might disagree, might not care. But I all right, so let's go into Instagram here. And you could see 
it looks pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and take a look at this picture of the moon. Scrolling through. Very good on both of these phones. And it looks like the animation definitely looks not quite as beautiful on the left, but they still have essentially the same performance. Um, in terms of the actual animation, it's just that the way it appears to the eye is definitely smoother on the 15 Pro. Let's go into eBay. And you'll see eBay first there on the right. We'll head up out of here. And then we'll go into Starbucks, three, two, go. And you can see a little faster there on the right. We'll go into JPEG Joyride and see how they do here. So maybe this A17 Pro chip is definitely giving it a little bit of a boost here, for sure. About the same there on Jetpack, basic game. But we already did M22 to really test these things. We'll also do a 3D Mark later. Let's go on to Subway Surf. And you'll see Subway Surfers is going to launch first there on the right. So very good on the iPhone 15 Pro. Once in game, doesn't really matter. Even the most basic Android phones and basic iPhones could run this game pretty easily. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. And we'll see what happens here for Dead Trigger 2. And looks like a slightly faster load there on the right. We'll hit play. And the, the right, definitely the right here. Again, let's go into Temper Run 2. So I do think the A17 Pro chip is giving it a little bit of a boost. Um, you've seen that even in the benchmarks that we had a little bit of a boost. This is asking for verifications and stuff. So we're gonna have to rerun these. Let's go ahead and rerun these. Let me go ahead and rerun Temple Run here. Let's close this out. And we'll go ahead and rerun Temple Run 3, 2, and go. And we'll see. Now it's a lot closer here. Still faster for the iPhone 15 Pro. So yeah, this A17 Pro chip definitely is boosted over the A16 in the iPhone 15. So it looks like we are seeing an improvement. Let's go into, okay guys, so let's head into Free Fire in three, two, and go. Let's see which one can get there first. I'm betting it's gonna be the 15 Pro based on the benchmarks. And it is. Yeah, see, it's even, even if it's a little bit, that's something, <laughs> then the iPhone 15 got to the home screen first. Um, so, yeah, both of them are good. Let's go into, okay guys, so let's go ahead and go into Hill Climb 2, 3, 2, go. See which one can launch this more basic game first. And you'll see, it says that we're in another device, but it was the 15 uh, Pro. This is the only issue when you're comparing them side by side, the accounts conflict. And then we do have basically one game saying, you can't play this on both sides, uh, whatever. I think they started doing that lately because I used to do the speed test and they never did that before. Now it doesn't want you playing at two devices at the same time. But you can see we're loading here first. So I have to say the same thing. So PUBG got here on the 15 Pro. There was an error here for the iPhone 15. Let's go back to the lobby, but we're now into the lobby here. So there was an error for the 15, but the 15 Pro was loading at first. Okay guys, so let's go into in chat, three, two, and go. And you could see nearly the same there. Let's go into 3D Mark, three, two, go. About the same on that one, Geekbench six. And this one takes a little longer, but faster on the right by a hair. We'll go into N22. And those are those previous scores we talked about earlier, speed test net, and pretty much the same. Let's go into iMovie, launching these more casual apps with perfection on both of them. And let's go into Luma Fusion, three, two, go. Let's see which one could get there first. Not neither really. So what I noticed here in this test is that we had the iPhone 15 Pro launching a lot of the applications faster. So I'm gonna give it to that one. Um, during the games, it showed its stuff a little bit, but overall I'd say the 15 Pro had taken the win here on this one. Let's go ahead and get in the RAM right. So let's go ahead and relaunch these applications, see if the iPhone 15 can hold everything in the background. The iPhone 15 is actually really toasty right now, as is the 15 Pro. I even, even after turning it off for five minutes, it's starting to warm up again because we're doing a lot of stuff here. And so this is loading something now as we came back in. 
that's not really a reload that's was loading something as well let's go into dead trigger 2 subway surfers jetpack joyride is this a reload this is a full reload here on jetpack joyride let's go into starbucks and ebay and then we have i'm not sure if that relaunched right there let's go over here instagram that relaunched so yeah the 15 can get bogged down if it gets a little too hot like if you're really pushing it and you do um see right there like little chop there you can get you can get it to bog down if you're really really pushing it like this but i'm not sure how many people will be pushing it but my iphone right now is definitely toasting on my hand so i'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the 15 okay so let's see what we have here now i could tell you automatically the animation feels better again we are looking at more ram this is feeling far snappier than the iphone 15 under this more stress than we see that we see than usual because i did do multiple ben benchmarks prior. Oh yeah, the 15 Pro definitely showing its stuff. I will have to 100% say the RAM management, the look, the feel, when under heavier use is easily a better performer on the iPhone 15 Pro. And our final 3D Mark scores are in and you could see an overall score of 2940 for the iPhone 15 with an overall score of 3762 on the 15 Pro. The average frame rates are slightly higher for the iPhone 15 Pro and it scores better than 86% um, of devices, 67%. So there is actually a substantial difference here in not only the N22, but also the Wildlife Extreme and a pretty sizable jump in the Geekbench from earlier. So this was actually a pretty good comparison seeing that the 15 Pro I think actually warrants that price difference over the 15. Okay, so we have the same 4K 30 videos on both. I'm gonna go ahead and hit, let's go ahead and save video on both. This is a five minute, one second clip. So this is gonna take some time. Let's go ahead and hit save video. And I'll actually be back when they are done exporting these. I'm betting it's gonna be the 15 Pro with the win. Let me know which one you think. Let's fast forward it. We'll be back in a second. In a very strange occurrence, the 15 actually beat the 15 Pro in this iMovie render. However, keep in mind that iMovie is incredibly optimized for Apple devices. So. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this same clip though. We're gonna do it now in InShot. This is gonna like make it a smaller file size more than likely. Um, but this is an MOV format, 30 frames a second, both at 847.6 megabytes. Let's see what you can do this task. Faster, three, two, and go. Oh, the 15, the 15 finished, we got ads here. The 15 finished right around the same time, a little bit quicker than the 15 Pro. I don't know why in the video, actual video render, 15 is doing better. Maybe this is getting um, throttled a little because we've been pushing these phones, but Overall, you know, the 15 kind of shocked me there in those tests. Okay, so let's go ahead and test the speed um, on the internet. We'll see which one can actually perform a better download. We are on the same server, so it shouldn't make a massive difference here. We can see 400 and some down. We usually get better download speeds for my Samsung phones, but we'll see what we get on the 15 on the upload. So the upload is looking like a 15, 16, maybe around 20 on the upload. And that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead now and see what we're gonna finish out with. We're gonna cap around 23.1, 23.3. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 15 Pro now and we'll see if it can perform a little bit better. 406 on the download, that's what we're trying to beat. And then on the upload, we're trying to beat 24. So we are pulling in better download speeds, but will it finish with a better download speed? That's the question. Usually, you know, a more pro phone should have pretty much better everything. And we did finish with a better download. So maybe you can pull in better download speeds if we go with the 15 Pro. Now on the upload, it shouldn't be very different whatsoever, but it's also gonna finish slightly higher here, it looks like, at 23.5. So the 15 Pro did better 
when it comes to the network performance. And one of the most used phone features is a camera. So let's see how fast it can launch those cameras in three, two, go. And you can see one is in video. I think that's the 15. Let's go ahead and close those out and we'll do it again. Three, two, go. And which one launched that first? They look like about the same as long as you tap them at the same time. Yeah, they're about the same. Now, when scrolling through, you can see, I would say the lens looks smoother to go through on the 15 Pro for sure. So the lens a little bit choppier on the 15, but overall not bad. Flipping it around, both of them have the same basic same features. So overall, this is it. This is wrapping it up. We really pushed them today. And I gotta say the 15 is pretty powerful for what you get, but it is let down by its six gigs of RAM, which can really make it stutter under, you know, more multitasking, heavier loads. And it's let down a little bit by, definitely by having the lack of a 120 Hertz display. So I think this video proves that the 15 with a 90 Hertz or 120 Hertz, the 16, if they give it that, is basically a great offering or even better offering. The 15 Pro is definitely the more powerhouse phone. However, you know, in certain applications like iMovie and InShot, it proves that, you know, great optimization means that you can still get some really great performance even on base model iPhones. So that's going to wrap it up here. Either way you go, you're probably going to be pretty happy. But you did see the differences here in multiple tests. Let me know if you enjoyed this video by hitting the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well. Peace.